So two different ways to look at this, and I'm not gonna we're not gonna spend a lot of time on my IT other than to, to mention it. My IT is actually the end user um, the end user way to populate data. So if I go in and make a request, I go in and uh, want to find information. I want to go in, and it is just that. It's my IT. So I have that in my handheld device, if you will. Everybody in BMC actually has it downloaded on their phones, uh, and so we're able to go in and log a ticket uh, on the fly if we need to. What we're talking about today, though, is BMC Remedy with Smart IT. So we're actually dealing with it from a persona-based application so that we can go in and start populating data uh, and logging the tickets an easier way to do things, or, or with an easier way to do things, I should say. And one way to do that is with that persona base. And what I mean by persona base, just keep this in mind, is uh, instead of the, the name license, oh, well, Dick's got a license, Valerie's got a license, Bill's got a license, Sally's got a license, and the list goes on. What we're doing is saying that this person, and the, and the person will be today, is, uh, and many of you are familiar with, is Alan Albrook. Um, I log in as Alan Albrook, and I am I am then tagged with this persona. This persona gives me uh, work orders, gives me uh, incident management, allows me to do knowledge management, allows me to view the information from the CMDB, uh, and and the list goes on. Makes me allows me to go in and deal task management and and create RFCs as well, as opposed to me logging in or getting a, a login, if you will, and then going in and checkboxing everything that you have. Uh, that, that you're able to do within the application. So it's just making it easier. Um, and then, you know, we start moving towards uh, what the overall advantage for that is. Um, why is that easier is because now it's more responsive and timely. Um, and so whether you are sitting down at a physical service desk with your headset on and, and you know, banging the phones all day long, uh, again, I did that. I understand that's still needed. Uh, however, there are those uh, technicians that need to be a little bit more mobile. Uh, they need to be able to either go out into uh, go out to another location. Uh, maybe they're you know across the hall. Uh, they're not able to go in and, and deal with something, or they need to go in and as they're in a meeting, they need to be able to respond to a uh, an incident or something of that nature. And so that's where we start looking at being able to get to the, uh, the the service desk a little bit differently. But we also need to have agile, knowledgeable staff. We need to make sure that there, there are dynamic resources and suggestions that are available to them and the ranked assignments, which allows the end user to benefit because it is handled quickly by the person that it's assigned to. And what I mean by that is, is that oh, we talked about the, the process overall and being able to have that process in place. So you have a named individual that can go in and, and be assigned to this one thing. So nobody in the world can do security badges except for the security office, and that's okay. That's not a problem, but we only have one person that, that, that can do that one function, and so it's automatically assigned to that. As opposed to being banged around to 15 different people, the process says, hey, guess what? Uh, Joe Bloggs over here is the individual that's responsible for that. Oh, okay then Joe Bloggs is the one that's going to be responsible for that from the process, and we need to make sure that he has access to go in and determine, is there a new security badge that needs to be done? What this overall provides is a lower cost of service because you do have the collaboration and knowledge, and you're able to provide the answers a lot quicker to the end user. Okay? This drives your overall cost down because now you're responding a lot quicker uh, and a lot faster. And, and if we look at the, uh, the numbers across the board, and I'll kind of give you a couple of different numbers, um, every engagement usually runs about $20 when you look at uh, worldwide average. Um, what it used to be, and I'll kind of break it down this way, is what that used to be is um, for an end user to resolve their own issue, it ended up being about a buck, a buck and a half, a dollar, a dollar and a half. And so uh, that's great, right? Uh, I get that handled. It doesn't cost me that much. Uh, when they call the level one technician or the, the, the first line of support or help desk, uh, that then goes up to about $15 per ticket, okay, and that's per ticket. Uh, that price has now jumped to 20 but nevertheless, it, it was 15 at the time of the, uh, the initial information. And the moment that we escalate to the level two, level threes, what was happening is, is that that cost was more than doubling because what was happening is it was going to cost us roughly around Twenty to thirty dollars an hour, okay, an hour, not per engagement, an hour. And so, what happens now is because we're able to do this a lot more streamlined, having the knowledge and collaboration overall, and being able to have it mobile, so I can access it wherever I am. 
Um, we have that communication. We're able to provide that information back out to the end user, and we're able to reduce that overall cost because it may have already been answered by a level two, level three, but we have that communication going, so it's cut, cut that cost down. Okay. Because it is an intuitive app, it does provide um, a faster learning. Uh, and uh, overall, like I said earlier, with uh, with the individual that says, hey, I want to log the ticket, or rather I don't want to log the ticket because it takes longer to log the ticket and answer the question, uh, it provides a more productive workforce. And because of this, it's actually faster learning because it is intuitive, because it is better adoption from the user base, um, which does lead to that uh, productive workforce. This is kind of saying the same thing over and over. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but what it does allow us to do is actually uh, connect to your overall requester. So even though I'm an individual that is utilizing Smart IT, I'm also a requester of the service. Uh, if you look at BMC as a whole, uh, the right star as a whole, they, they all have their, their technicians, their analysts that are, that are dealing with things on a regular basis. However, those individuals and our individuals in-house in are also users of the system from an end user perspective. If I go in uh, as a service desk analyst and I want to log a ticket, I want to make sure that I'm getting the same type of service that I'm expected to produce uh, from an analyst side. So as we look at this, you know, one of the first things you do when you log into Remedy or, or you know, your mileage may vary, if you will, as you may have it looking a little bit differently in your environment. Uh, is you deal with flash forwards. You want to see what's going on, and then you go to your console. You want to see what uh, what all's happening, um, and then be able to go in and and see what's uh, what's in your in your queue, if you will. And so, what we look at uh, initially is you see uh, number one, I'm logged in as Alan Albrook, upper right hand side, uh, but I also am online, so I have the ability to chat with my end user or with my technicians. Um, and then I have the ability to chat with my end users through other means. But uh, one of the things about this is I can set my, my status, if you will, to available, uh, and it allows me to go in and have that communication going back and forth. So remember we talked about collaboration, being able to have the communication back and forth with other users of the system. Uh, but what we also see is I see the graphical representations. I see what's going on. I want to see if there's any backlogs. Uh, and you can see, hey, guess what? My system, I'm rocking. I'm doing really good. Um, and so I don't have any backlog, uh, but I do have some open incidents. And I can see those based off of my um, my screen. I've got eight on high, uh, sorry, eight on critical, eight on, uh, 10 on high, and uh, 18, and then 26. Um, but I have this information on my fingertips because it becomes beneficial. And I know one of the questions is, is oh, can I change this? Can this look different? Absolutely. Okay, so when you look at what's available to you, what's, uh, what you're setting up, um, I want to be able to go and look at uh, my different groups, and just like you can within Remedy now, you have the ability to go in and break it out the way that you need to see that, so you can see the, the perspective. Additionally, uh, I can see my work orders, and I can see the service request that I'm uh, that, that's in the system. And so those become very beneficial to me, and I'm happy to say that if you look at the, the charts on the on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, which is the middle of the screen, uh, I don't have any backlog. So I'm, uh, I am very pleased with that, uh, very helpful. Um, but you can start looking at some of the open ones that I have below there. Okay. Uh, additionally, I see the information to the left of the screen. And where this becomes important is because now I see the updates that I want to see. I get to see the ones that are important to me. I get to see those where the SLAs are actually um, uh, becoming due, if you will. You can see doing four hours, six hours, four hours. Uh, I was actually doing this presentation uh, a couple of days ago, and I had one that was due in like five minutes, and, uh, well, we didn't meet it. So um, it's one of, one of those things. And so that information, you see they're all hyperlinked, it does become valuable because now I get to see, again, what is available to me and what is important to me. You'll see right beside that where it says following 27 items next to the updates. And the reason that becomes beneficial is I have the ability to follow each one of these. You may be familiar with the watch list. This is another way to deal with that. And the reason this is important is because I may have a ticket that has been logged. And Dick may have logged this ticket. And he's very important. And I want to make sure that it's taken care of. However, I can't resolve the problem. Okay but I want to make sure he is taken care of overall, so I follow it. I like the, uh, uh, like the ticket, if you will, and then 
I'm able to find out the resolution. I'm able to have it on my screen. I'm able to deal with it on a regular basis. So that's where that becomes beneficial. Now, as we look at some of the other data, uh, we want to go in and look at the console itself. And this is where we start taking and changing the way things have been done in the past. Now, keep in mind the dashboard is just that, just a dashboard. It gives you the information that's important to me at the time. But I need some actionable information as well. I need to find out the console. And so you can see in this case, I want to see all the tickets, and they're filtered. I see I've got 57 tickets, five of them critical, one new ticket, 57 open tickets. That information becomes what am I working on for the day. And each one of these, pardon me, each one of these you can see has a hyperlink. So I'm able to go into those and work them and deal with them on a regular basis. But I need to make that filter a little bit easier. If I want to see it based on my assignee group, uh, or if you're in a multi-tenant organization, I might want to see it in multiple companies. The other thing is, is maybe I'm dealing with the critical ones, and you saw I've got five critical tickets. I want to see just those that are critical. And so now I have that list of five critical tickets in front of me. That becomes, again, that beneficial information and in how I want to do things the way that I need to do them because I'm more productive. And seeing that in front of me helps me overall. Now, not just the filtered information, but being able to save this as a preset so I can go back and refer to it later, it's kind of like a safe search. I want to be able to go in and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to have to create that filter every single time. And so by saving it as a preset, that becomes another one of those benefits to me. Also, if I go back and clear out the filter, I can see back to 57 tickets. And again, I can work those tickets. Now, Instead of going and working one, I actually want to generate one and create one on the fly. And the reason being is because I want to show you or introduce you to what's called the smart recorder. Now, we talk about this being intuitive, being easy to learn. And so you see it actually gives you the data or what you're supposed to be doing when you get to the smart recorder, okay, in a person's name. So on the phone, we may have at Joe. And I see at Joe answer pops up. Now, if you've got more than one Joe, of course, you're going to continue to type in. But I've got at Joe's information. Well, that's great. That helps me. Now, I pulled up Joe's record, and I get to see a lot of bit of data for this. Number one, I get to see the customer information. I get to see where he's located. I get to see the phone number. I get to see his escalations per month, the assigned assets, and his open tickets. Also, I get to see any resolve tickets should he need to uh, refer back to those. And so that becomes, again, another one of those beneficial things. However, in dealing with this, I'm going to say, all right, Joe, what's the problem? He says, I'm having problems with my laptop, and I cannot connect to the printer. Well, that's great. Okay, so let's resolve this problem. Let's get this taken care of. And for those of you that were following along at home, what you saw on the right-hand side was templates that actually popped up. Those templates are actually touched with the information that I typed into um, uh, into the smart recorder. And so you can see those different templates that I have. I see an incident template. Uh, cannot connect to network. Cannot connect to wireless. Cannot connect to VPN. Yeah, those don't exactly help me. Although that might be good, I might need to go and show more or see any others. Ah, there we go, connect to network printer. That might be something that's going on. But I do see in this that it's $150, Joe, and it's turnaround time in 24 hours. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, great. So I can start populating that data. Additionally, I can actually go in and see less of this. And what happens is based off of whatever I've chosen here, this list gets bigger or smaller. So from here, I'm going to create my service request. And you see at the top of that, it says ticket is not yet saved. And the reason being, look at the bottom left-hand corner, you see I've got one more required field. This is ingenious because now it's intuitive to figure out, oh, I still have another one that needs to be filled out. Once I fill that out, you see all required fields are complete, confirm and save, I'm good to go, and you see it is now saved successfully. 